In my last video about GTA Vice City and how an area called the Gator Keys was completely cut from the game, you might remember seeing this map in the video, which shows a pre-release version of Vice City's map. It shows a lot of differences between what they initially started out creating when the game was in production and what they ended up making by the time the game came out. And looking at this map and the differences between it and the final map is exactly how we're going to spend this video, because I really think this is worth a much closer look and a discussion about game development in general and why certain things have been changed. As I mentioned before, this map can be found in the game in the garage underneath Sunshine Autos where you can enter street races. At first, I was surprised that an early version of the map would even be placed somewhere in the game, but most likely it was added here when the game's map still looked like this, and when the changes were made, they probably just forgot about it. Something similar happened with GTA 4's map on a smaller scale. You can see an early version of Liberty City's map on a phone book texture. Maybe we'll look into this in a future video, but for now, I just wanted to focus specifically on Vice City's beta map. It's quite rare that something like this would be included in a game, let alone with this much detail on it. The only times we usually see stuff like this are when the developers themselves release concept art for the game that was made in either pre-production or early in production, and with Rockstar, that sort of stuff doesn't usually happen. Comparing the two maps, it's easy to see a lot of the big differences, like how the beach is way smaller on the northern end of the Vice Beach Island, and how the stadium is completely gone. But when you look more closely at it, you'll see a lot more differences, which may have relatively easy explanations for why they might have been changed, starting with the road layouts of Vice City. Originally, Ocean Drive appeared to just be one long stretch of road, presumably with alleys like these that would run between the hotels and allow you to cross into the next street over. By the time they finished the game, they added a few side streets. I'm guessing they did this just to make it easier to cross between the streets if you had to, and maybe to indicate to new players that you can cross through unobstructed. The map marks these side streets just like any other street in Vice City, with a bold black line. But check this out. The map and the radar both show this as being a street, but it's actually still an alley. I guess they forgot to turn this into a street when they decided to add the side streets. Or maybe they realized that it'd be a little harder to turn this into a street because one of the buildings kind of juts out further than the others and it's sort of in the way. Meaning that they decided to keep this as an alley but forgot to remove the street marking that had already been made on the map. West of Ocean Drive, another side street was added. This had to have been done to make traveling around here easier for the player, especially if you just entered the island from the bridge and had to go directly east, like to the safe house. In the beta version, if you stayed on this road, you'd either be stuck and end up going north to the construction site, or you'd be going off-road onto the grass every time you wanted to go east and didn't want to cross through a bunch of streets. They also added a small bridge, probably to make it easier to get to the construction site from this part of the island, which is across the river. You can drive over grass, but water is Tommy Versetti's sworn enemy next to traitors and anybody who belongs to a gang that isn't led by Danny Trejo. So it's a good thing they added this bridge. Speaking of bridges, what the hell is going on with the LeafLinks bridge? I think it's worth mentioning that the MacArthur Causeway, which is one of the connections in real life between Miami and Miami Beach, runs at a very similar angle. Is it possible that this wasn't even a full bridge in the beta, but something that looked like this instead? The West Island, or mainland of Vice City, shows a lot of new streets added, likely for the same reason as a lot of the streets in the Vice Beach area were added, for the sake of convenience and to make it easier to get around. For example, if you had to get to Little Haiti in the beta map coming from the LeafLinks Bridge, you would have had to go completely around this curve just to wind up on that major street and then having to turn yet again. And look at downtown. This entire street that was in the game was originally just supposed to be an alley. It's kind of easy to tell when you go here in the game. Unlike every other street in downtown, which is lined with shops and signs on the side of buildings, this street is pretty undetailed and it's void of any sort of shop fronts or signs on buildings. Beyond the roads, let's look at some of the other changes that were made to the map. Looks like this rocky area on the southern end of Vice Beach was added later on, and that means that the lighthouse was also probably not present in the initial version of the game. Speaking of Vice Beach, check out the beach! It looks fairly normal in the southern half of the island, but in the beta version, the northern half is almost completely missing. Now, this difference is actually kind of strange. The beach in Vice City was nice, and for a city based on Miami, it makes perfect sense to include. But besides it being there just because it's based on Miami Beach, it had no other purpose. And it definitely didn't need to be this big beyond Ocean Drive, since it gets to a point where huge buildings separate the beach from the street. I'm willing to bet that most people already hardly spent enough time at the beach in this game to notice or care if it's big or not, especially in the northern half of the island. I think one reason that they could have made the northern end of the beach equal in size to the southern end is to give the impression that the map is bigger than it is, but that's just my guess. Another beach was added to the western edge of downtown. There's literally nothing out here, nothing to collect, nothing to do, and I think the only purpose it might serve is to act as a shortcut if you have to go between downtown and Phil's place, provided you can find how to get out and into Little Haiti. 
It's a pretty pointless addition. But a not so pointless addition that was made to downtown was the stadium. The fact that it isn't present in the beta map shows that the idea for a stadium probably came later on in production. Someone I was discussing this with recently even mentioned to me how they always thought that the stadium felt very oddly placed and seemed tacked on to the rest of the map. And now we know why he felt that way. The stadium was only added later in production, and given that most of the land in Vice City is already used up, there was nowhere else to put it, so they just stuck it under the side of the map where it sticks out like a giant pimple. I'm willing to bet that the stadium was added way later in development too. While we have the races that take place inside of it, the interior isn't even modeled outside of the ring that it's meant to take place in. It's completely dark and you almost feel like you're in outer space instead of inside of a stadium. It's like they didn't have enough time to model it completely. And if I'm being perfectly honest, that goes for almost the entire western island in the game. The Vice Beach Island is very well detailed for an open world game from 2002. There's unique buildings, interesting places to explore, and it's overall the more colorful and fun part of the map. The Western Island? Well, besides it being practically gray everywhere, a lot of it just feels really thrown together last minute. Like if they realized that they were coming up on the deadline before the game had to be finished and rushed to ship it out on time. It would explain a lot of the weirdness you see on this part of the map. Why are there so many empty spaces like this? Why are there apartment buildings in the middle of an alley? Why are these textures so horribly out of proportion? And just what the hell is going on with these buildings? I mean seriously, are these supposed to be parking garages? One final thing that I wanted to focus on in this video would be the airport. It underwent a ton of changes between the initial map that was created and the map that they wound up making in the final game. For starters, there's the famous Ghost Tower, which you can see when you're on the eastern part of the map before driving across one of the bridges. Then when the game loads the western island, the tower disappears. That's because the LOD model of half of the map is what appears as the background whenever you're across from it on the other half of the map that is fully loaded. When you zip over to the western island to take a look at where the Ghost Tower is located, it's very close to where Fort Baxter Air Base is located in the final version of the map. While some initially believe that this, plus the fact that there's a runway here in the beta map, meant that Fort Baxter Air Base was actually an air base and not just some small military base, this is actually just another part of Escobar International Airport. Fort Baxter didn't even exist in the beta version. The southern half of the airport was relatively the same compared to the final game, but the northern half was a lot different. Obviously, there was the ghost tower and probably some other spots for hangars and whatnot, but look at the runway. It was shaped like an actual runway unlike this weird curvy runway that we ended up getting in the final game. Seriously, this, uh, yeah, it's kind of a weird shape for a runway at an airport. I'm pretty sure even tiny regional airports and dirt airstrips don't even have runways that suddenly just curve at an 80 degree angle for no reason. Because all planes need to land in a straight line, especially jets where it's impossible to suddenly turn a second after landing. In fact, I bet that this scene is exactly why they chose to keep the runway and change it instead of just getting rid of it. The airplane landing at the beginning. It's admittedly a pretty nice shot and it helps set up the beginning of the story, where Tommy just recently arrived and us as players were also new to Vice City. And I will never hear those notes on a piano without ever thinking of a jet engine sound. Of course, if this was real life, the cutscene would probably go something like this. Uh, Ken Rosenberg. Ah! Oh, oh, for God's sake! Oh, jeez! Simply because large jets cannot land on anything shaped like that. So why would they decide to shrink the size of the airport, I hear you asking? Probably because in a game where the only flyable plane is a seaplane that can land on solid ground but can only take off from water, and where the rest of the flying vehicles are helicopters, an airport that's this big is just another giant, empty, unused space that people might go to once to explore and then never come back. Some already think the airport in Vice City is oversized, it takes up at least a third of the West Island. So they decided to scale it back, and they gave us a military base to add a bit of variety to this island. And that just about does it for the beta map of Vice City. Obviously, the gator keys are not present, and as I explained in my last video, this was either due to them being completely cut very early in production, or they were considered later in production, like the stadium and military base, before they were scrapped, due to either time constraints or Burt Reynolds constraints. And while the general layout between the beta map and the final map stayed the same, you can still see plenty of major differences. What do you guys think? Do you think it was a good idea to scale back the size of the airport, or should they have left it as is? Would the lack of certain streets make the city any less easy to navigate? Was this extra amount of beach really necessary? Do you like the map we got, or do you wish we could have gotten the beta map instead? Whatever your thoughts, let me know in the comments section. This is Badger, and as always, thank you for watching.